Hi, I'm Dr. Krupke. This week on our blog, we're going to talk a little bit about functional medicine testing for the cardiovascular system. February is Heart Health Month, or Cardiovascular Disease Month, however you want to look at it. Um, so I figured it's an appropriate time to bring this up and talk a little bit about um, the, the right ways to test for heart disease and the right ways to assess what your risks are. Now, millions of people around the world are affected by cardiovascular disease, and that, that's truly cardiovascular. Some people have problems with the heart, some people have problems with the vessels, but it, it's one system. Um, so understand that when I talk about it, it includes both the cardio and the vascular, all right? Um, but there are lots of risk factors for cardiovascular disease or, or for cardiovascular events once you have the disease. Uh, but we can only do so much about the risk factors if we can't see them. And with the right kind of testing, you can see all the different risk factors or all the different analytes that, that indicate that you have certain risks. And we can start to do something to mitigate those. So it's important to get the right kind of cardiovascular test. And what we use, again, if you're used to my blogs, you've heard me mention Metametrics before is one of the labs that I use. And they have a cardiovascular health profile that I think is really one of the most complete on the market right now for the price. So with the cardiovascular health profile, it, combine, it combines the, the traditional markers, like the total cholesterol panel, the, the total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, and triglycerides that you get from your regular doctor on your physical. It, it has that, but then it also includes a lot of other functional medicine analytes that, that I think really get us more to the, the heart of the matter, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, so it goes beyond the basic um, lipid panel and looks for markers for nutritional issues, oxidative damage, which is kind of a, an imbalance between free radicals and antioxidants, um, inflammation in the cardiovascular system, and certain specific hormone imbalances that can affect the cardiovascular system. Now, with all that information, it really allows us to customize a program to mitigate any risks you may have for cardiovascular disease. All right, so it really allows us to get specific. That's what it comes down to. So what does it really test for? Let's get into the, into the list of what's on this test so that you know. Um, you can always ask your family doctor, your cardiologist, uh, to do this same list of tests on you. It may be difficult for their lab to do some of these, or it may cost you a ton of money or your insurance company, but they are generally available. Uh, they just aren't regularly done. So get a pen and paper if you want to write this down and, and, and see what you can get done. Um, the test includes total cholesterol, HDL, which is the, the protective cholesterol, LDL, which is generally thought of to be the bad cholesterol, triglycerides, which have a lot to do with blood sugar and refined carbohydrate intake, um, and, and it also includes something called lipoprotein A. Now, your body can make lipoprotein A by using LDL and something called apolipoprotein. When you put those two together, you get this kind of sticky molecule called lipoprotein A. Knowing how high your lipoprotein A levels are lets us, it kind of helps us interpret the rest of the, of the cholesterol panel, and it alone can be an independent risk factor uh, kind of predicting whether or not you're likely to have a cardiovascular event. So even without the rest of the lipid panel, it can be pretty valuable to see the, the lipoprotein A. Now, we also look for markers of chronic inflammation. Ferritin can be a marker for that. Ferritin is the storage form of iron in your body. And you, if you have too much ferritin floating around in your body, you tend to oxidize things. Iron rusts, it's an oxidizer. Uh, and so you can build up inflammation with that. Uh, fibrinogen is a really sticky, gooey kind of molecule you use to make clots in your, in your bloodstream. Now we need to have some of it because we have to be able to clot, right? We don't want to just bleed all over the place if something happens. but you don't want to have too much of it. If you have too much, especially if you have a couple other things going on, then you really heighten your risk for strokes um, or anything caused by a, a blood clot. Uh, and then CRP or C-reactive protein, the letter C, reactive protein. Now, C-reactive protein is a marker for inflammation, particularly in the vascular system. Uh, so when we see elevated levels of CRP or C-reactive protein, we know that you've got an inflammatory issue going on. So those are your markers for chronic inflammation. Now, we also have markers for oxidative stress or oxidative damage. That's that free radical antioxidant imbalance that I talked about a minute ago. And under that heading, we test for homocysteine, which has a lot to do with B12 and folic acid cycles and, and how those nutrients are, are interacting and recycling with each other. 
CoQ10, which a lot of people have heard of. Yes, you can test for CoQ10 sufficiency. And CoQ10 is a, is a major antioxidant within the cardiovascular system. Interestingly enough, CoQ10 also plays a huge role in your ability to produce energy in the cells. As, as raw substrate gets put into the mitochondria, CoQ10 is partly what activates that and gets you started making ATP, which is our basic dollar bill for energy, if you will, inside your body. And for those of you that are having flashbacks to biochemistry, I apologize, but I just had to go there. Um, lipid peroxides. Uh, this, and again, we're in the, the antioxidant free radical balance issue here. Lipid peroxides. Now, that is oxidized fats or basically rancid fats inside your body. And we don't want the good fats we have floating around to go rancid and become bad fats. So that's what lipid peroxides are. They're the bad fats. So we're testing for those. And then alpha and gamma tocopherol. Those are subfractions of vitamin E that generally protect you against your fats going rancid. So we're seeing the protective factors and whether or not they're doing their job. Lastly, it has a few other important tests. Um, insulin levels are checked, uh, testosterone levels, something called sex hormone binding globulin, uh, and a free androgen index, androgen meaning testosterone and estrogen, because depending on the balance of those, that can play a, a significant role in your development of not only cardiovascular disease, but inflammatory issues overall. And then we also test for red blood cell magnesium levels. Magnesium has a lot to do with the irritability of the heart. Right? Do you get PVCs? Does it flutter? Does it have irregular beats? Looking at the magnesium in the serum part of the blood, which a lot of times you get as part of a regular chemistry panel, your body protects that level almost at all cost. Until levels are depleted in almost every other cell in your body, you won't see a depletion in the serum magnesium. Now, if you look at red blood cell magnesium, it's much more sensitive and you can start to see deficiencies in red blood cell magnesium long before you would see them in the serum magnesium. So it's just a much more sensitive marker for magnesium deficiency and, and really the gold standard for magnesium deficiency. So, now magnesium, let me say this, magnesium has a lot to do with the irritability of muscles. Don't forget your heart is a muscle. Anything that can make an, another muscle in your body cramp can make your heart basically cramp as well. Uh, and you don't want that to happen. So we're looking for markers for that. So that's what's included in the cardiovascular health profile from Metametrics that we do. And almost every one of those things on the list, we can modify those factors if we see that they're out of range. There are things we can do to get them back in range and significantly reduce your risk of having some sort of cardiovascular event, well beyond just controlling the total cholesterol number. Uh, it's a whole different video that I'm going to do that explains some of the fallacies with that. But there's a lot more that goes into cardiovascular disease and cardiovascular management than just lowering cholesterol levels, okay? So it, be aware of that. And you can Google it and come up with some research on your own, or you can wait for me to do the video on that. It should be soon. Now, once we get all this information, we can really fully understand your risk factors well beyond what the regular cholesterol panel tells us, and we can put together or, or customize a program for you to deal with those risk factors and get them under control, rather than just you know taking a trial and error approach where you read an article about, hey, I need to take such and such, or you know, hey, don't eat more of this. We can nail it down for you and tell you exactly what you really need to do. Customize a program for you, retest later, make sure we got the job done, and let you know that you're really well controlled controlled as far as your cardiovascular risk. So until next time, that handles it for cardiovascular testing. Again, as usual, feel free to leave us comments. The more comments I get, the more I know what you want to see in future videos. All right. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.